morning. Today we had the pleasure of speaking to Peter Hobson, the innovator who discovered the soul wave. It gets even better because we also have two scientific creations that are simulations of Peter's mind, but contain several defining characteristics of their own. I'll ask some questions and we'll see how the three Peter Hobsons answer the same question. So tell us, Peter, do you believe that we as human beings have souls? After extensive scientific research, it is without a doubt that human beings have souls. I have recorded hundreds of soul waves within the brain of over 100 healthy people, as well as a soul wave entering the bodies of babies still in the womb. I do believe that human beings have a soul, but I also know that I am immortal and don't have to worry about that. More research needs to be done on the subject, but it's not like I'm going anywhere. I can always look into it sooner or later. I believe that human beings have a soul because Peter Hobson's research shows an energy leaving the human body at the time of death. There is definitely the need to do more research to discover more about the human soul. Interesting. You all seem to believe that humans do indeed have souls, but how would you define a soul? The soul, a face value of an individual's moral values and beliefs, scientifically speaking, a system of neural network connection within the bodies body which are responsible for human immortality. A soul is the essence of the type of person a human being was that survives after death. It doesn't retain the memories of the life it lived, but it preserves the characteristics of the person it belonged to. A soul is the part of the human being that faces ultimate judgment after death. This soul also provides moral limitations, which thankfully I don't share. So I am able to do what Peter Hobson never could. Is it possible for there to be a physical version of a human soul? The physical version of a human soul is a soul wave. These soul waves are cohesive electric fields, and while you cannot physically see them, as you might see a ghost with advanced in technology, you are able to detect these soul waves through the use of my super EEZ. Peter Hobson has found some physical proof of souls which are now named soul waves. These are electrical waves are invisible to the naked eye and are only detectable through the use of the super EEG test. After extensive research on the global network computer, it seems that Peter Hobson has found some physical proof of souls, which he named soul waves. These are electrical waves that are invisible to the naked eye and so far are only detectable through the super EEG test. It seems that you all believe there is enough evidence supporting the belief in a human soul. But is it possible for a soul to be purely evil? Some investment souls leap randomly into newborn, newborn bodies without a life plan or any spiritual counseling. Reckless and fear, fearful, they live in an unstable mental state, without purpose and something, no moral compass, as they evil, may be just more inclined to bad choices. The limited information discovered about souls only proves their existence. We don't have the technology or data to analyze souls to find out their true nature. Sometime in the future, I'm sure I'll turn my attention to it, but seeing as it doesn't really concern me, I'm, going to, I'm in no rush to pursue this theory. From the research I've looked at, souls don't retain any memories of the human lives they lived. They are the preservation of the essence of that human being. Therefore, an argument can be made that a bad person will result in an evil soul. There is not enough evidence yet to confirm this theory or refute it. Now, moving on to the big question. Do you believe in an afterlife? Life creates the universe and not the other way around. This means space and time don't exist in a linear fashion we think it does. If space and time are linear, then they cannot exist in any real sense either. As humans, we believe in death because we have been taught we die, or more specifically, our consciousness associated with life, with bodies, and we know that bodies die. The afterlife is a continued existence of the soul, of, of the soul believed to follow death. More cultures have been have some beliefs in the afterlife, and perception is usually influenced their religions. Depending on your religion or lack of, the afterlife may be viewed as a very pleasant or unpleasant experience, or completely non-existence. As for concrete proof, we don't have any yet. This is an oppressing concern of mine, as I will never have the pleasure of finding out firsthand. Sooner or later, I'm sure I will turn my attention to this question, but I will never have the ability to experience it for myself. Peter Hobson's research shows that a soul enters the body nine to ten weeks into a pregnancy and leaves the body at the time of death. The afterlife must be a continued existence of the soul after death. Most cultures do believe in an afterlife. It is based on the culture's religion. It is also still possible, due to the lack of evidence, 
that the theory of reincarnation of souls is possible. Since there is nothing to identify or view characteristics of souls, it is possible that the same souls are reused over and over again. A strong point for this theory is the soul's lack of human memory. In your opinion, what do you think the afterlife would be like? The afterlife is a place where the soul of an individual travels to. While science cannot support an afterlife, the existing soul can be arguable, and therefore the location of soul after death is arguable as well. I personally cannot speculate as to what the afterlife will be like. I have the luxury of having immortality and unlimited time to increase my knowledge and explore simulations. Resulting from the fact that nobody knows what the afterlife will be, afterlife will be like, there cannot even be a simulation of it, which I can explore for my own. I cannot fathom what the afterlife would be like since I will never have to worry about ultimate judgment. I am superior to humans by not having to deal with that, so I base my actions and try to fill the absence of a higher power in my existence. What is your definition of this potential afterlife? After performing my super easy test on PZ Fnil, a human, dying, a human dying of old age, I discovered a soul with cohesive electrical field moving through her brain and departing from it at the moment of death. This is the first scientific proof of some form of continuous, continuing existence after death, which alludes to the fact that the afterlife must be where human souls go after the death of their bodies. The afterlife is where souls of mortals go after their human bodies have died. I cannot speculate as to what happens to the souls once there, but I am confident that this is where soul waves end up after their human death. I believe that the afterlife is where the souls go after the death of their human body. These souls do not retain memories, but rather preserve the essence the person was while they were living. Do you think that belief in the soul is faith-based, or is it based off of scientific knowledge? I believe the soul is faith-based. Because the naked eye is unable to see the soul, one must believe that humans have a soul. Religion teaches us values, morals, and tries to explain the way of life. Many religions, dis religions discuss guidelines for maintaining a pure soul or being honest and truthful to ensure one's journey to heaven after. I believe that the soul was faith-based until after Peter Hobson's research. This shows numerous examples of a soul entering and leaving the human body. At this point, it is now based off of scientific knowledge, if it is indeed a soul. However, I feel that the characteristics of the afterlife are the new big question taking over the big question about souls. I also believe that the soul was faith-based until Peter's research. This shows numerous examples of a soul entering and leaving the human body. At this point, it is now based off of scientific knowledge, if it is indeed a soul. What do you look to for answers? Science or faith in religion? Well, some theories defined by faith or religions are universally accepted. When I'm trying to answer a question, the best option for me is science. It is possible, of course, to define a supernatural relig religious world, world view that is not in conflict with science, but in all of its traditional Western forms, supernatural religious worldview makes the assumptions that the universe and its inhabitants have been designed and created, and in several cases, guided by force or beings which transcends the material world. Science, on the other hand, assumes that there are no immaterial forces and that all forces which do exist within the universe behave in a random fashion. The nature of these forces and all other scientific knowledge is revealed only through human efforts in a dynamic process of inquiry. I am immortal and therefore have unlimited time to spend looking for answers. Every answer I find is based off of scientific reason and data. I have found no proof to suggest I should base my quest for knowledge off of faith in a religion or higher being, rather than concrete scientific evidence. I am incapable of being judged by a higher being. Everything I do and every action I take is based off of rational thinking with no moral restrictions. Therefore, it is science that justifies the action I take, because there is no reason for me to put my faith in anything but myself. Thank you all for your enlightening answers. We must take a short break, but after that we will introduce our special guest. Welcome back. Now I'd like to introduce our special guest, John Serrell, who has a few comments to make about the interview that just happened. Welcome, John. Thanks for having me. I'd like to start off by congratulating Peter on his accomplishments and the fact that these simulations created by Dr. Sarkar are extraordinary. However, I do not believe that they actually know what they're talking about. They speak about understanding souls and have some opinions of what lies ahead in the afterlife, but neither of them is capable of actually experiencing these phenomena. 
There is no question that these simulations are game changers in the science world, but at the end of the day they are just that, simulations. A perfect example of this is fire. It doesn't matter how well you simulate it, if it's not the real thing, at the end of the day nothing will get burnt. Continuing on this path, I don't believe either of these two simulacra have achieved true human consciousness. Human consciousness is a physical trait which can, they cannot possibly obtain because they are computerized simulations. While they are actual brain scans of Peter, they still do not possess the physical traits he does. Even if an update was made to their programming, it will not change that fact. Thank you for your input, Mr. Cyril, and thank you to Peter Hobson and the two simulacra. I hope to interview you all again in the future sometime. Thank you for having us.